Douglas County and thank you for joining us for our district dialogue. It is the month of September and so I'm so excited that Chief Allen gets to be my first guest um, in a series that I'm doing to target public safety. Uh, it was really important for me to have you here during September in honor of 9-11 um, to recognize the first responders, um, of course, from the Twin Towers tragedy, but also in terms of what the first responders do here in Douglas County. With that being said, are you so excited to be our current fire chief? You've been doing a fantastic job. I know you've been in the role for quite some time, but officially got sworn in in what, about May or? It was in, it was in March. March. Actually. Yes. And yes, I am, I am stoked. This is, this is beautiful. So what have you, I guess, in your tenure here, what have you learned about Douglas County? So, uh, I've known a lot about the fire department in Douglas County. I've lived here for about 23 years, so uh, I would stop in the stations every now and then. Uh, but um, there's some, there's a lot of new things that I've learned about Douglas County uh, that has that has enlightened me on the changes that we're looking forward to uh, making in the future. So I know we've had several conversations, um, you know, about District 2 specifically and its needs. And I know that we're currently in the process of having a new fire station built. So tell us a little bit about that. So District 2, which is your district. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, currently has two fire stations. You have fire station number one and fire station number six. Fire station number nine is going to be the brand new super station that we're building. Uh, it's a, it cost us somewhere around the $10, $11 million range, but that station will be used for the industrial area. You have Google, Switch, Amazon. You have a lot of hazardous materials out in that area, and that station will be specifically used to house those sp specific incidents that may happen out there and to, to cover that side of the county. Do we have a time frame for completion on that station? We are hoping with our fingers crossed that we're looking somewhere around the springtime, maybe the beginning of summer. Oh, so that's an excellent actual um, service delivery because you all just broke ground on that in early July, late June? Yes, yes. And so the weather has been gracious to us lately. So. Uh, Construction has been going very well. Currently, they have the foundation laid. Uh, they were waiting on some doors, so they have interior walls built. Uh, it's moving pretty fast. And so with the um, building of this new station, do you expect to see a, um, enhancements in call response times and things of that nature? We're hoping that our, res our calls and our response, well, our response times are going to be shortened in that area. Of course, uh, it allows us quicker access to I-20. It allows us quicker access to tributary. Um, and so our response times should shorten down, but we're hoping and praying that our call volume actually goes down. Unfortunately, every year our call volume has increased somewhere between the two to four percent. What do you think is driving the increase in, in calls that you all are receiving? One of the things that's driving the increase is the, the growth. The county has done a miraculous job in growing. Like I said, Google, Switch, all the industrial areas that's being uh, built. We have, um, uh, we have the Lionsgate stu uh, studio being built. Uh, we just have so much growth that's going on in this county. So with growth also comes people, also comes incidents, uh, which we do respond to everything. So we expect the, the calls to increase uh, the call volume, um, but we're, we're forward looking. We have a plan on trying to match that as, as time grows on. Uh, speaking of being forward thinking, I know Douglas County is rapidly changing, but we've always been a metro um, county. It's just now we are starting to feel some of that um, population expansion. So where do you see um, Douglas County's fire department going in the next 10, 15, 20 years? So it is, it is my wish that uh, in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years that the county uh, adds more fire stations. We add more vehicles. We add more personnel. You said it. We are a metro. Um, we're not that small little county that we once were 23 years ago when I moved here. We are actually responding to a lot more calls, a lot bigger calls, once again, because of the growth. And... We don't just respond just because it's fires and emergency. We also do things to enhance the, uh, the community. Uh, keep in mind, 
the more the more stations, the more uh, fire trucks, the more individuals. Uh, it helps our ISO rating, which helps the insurance costs for our our community. Oh, so you guys are are tackling public safety and helping hopefully uh, keep some dollars in our residents' <laughs> pockets. So I know that that's why everybody loves the fire department. Yes, ma'am. Makes sense. So you mentioned. Um, you know, being forward thinking and being out in the community. Are there any specialty units that you want to develop in our fire department? And if so, what are those? So uh, every fire department uh, should have, if they don't already have, uh, hazardous material, uh, heavy rescue teams, uh, technical rescue teams. Of course, we do EMS. Uh, one thing that we're also adding on there is mobile integrated health. So we're responding to behavioral health, uh, mental issues, uh, behavioral health issues, things of that nature. Uh, we're looking at having uh, clinicians and practitioners to be able to shorten those response times for our ambulances. So our ambulances can respond more to the me medical emergencies and our mobile integrated health and our behavioral health side will respond to the behavioral health issues. Um, and so do we currently have a hazardous management team or firefighters that are trained in that or is that something we would have to expand to do? We have firefighters who are hazardous material technicians. Okay. So that means they are the guys that go in and they deal with all the nasty green stuff that may happen <laughs> on the roads and things of that nature. However, it's it's still in, in its infancy because we still need uh, a lot of equipment. We still need a lot more uh, training. Um, but we have the we have the people we have the experience. It's just some other things that we need to make sure that we are 100 percent ready to be totally uh, uh, sufficient on our own. So if you had to identify um, the different categories of specialized response teams, what would those be? And does Douglas County have that right now? Uh, we we have a semblance of of them. Okay. So like I said, we have technical rescue. We do have hazmat. We do have a heavy rescue, or excuse me, we have a light rescue squad that actually go in and do extrications, things of that nature. We, all, we do have our fire, fire uh, department, fire trucks. We have a tanker. We have two tankers that cover both sides of the county. So as we start to mature, we're starting to add different things on. We're starting to look at a water rescue team. Uh, to get that going, we have the Sweetwater Creek and other uh, other waterways that we need those spe uh, specific jobs in. So we're starting to grow little by little. So it's a it's a marathon and not a sprint. And you guys feel like you are on track and on target to bring those service offerings to Douglas County? Certain things, yes. Certain things, no, because it does take time. Uh, it takes time. It takes money. It takes uh, training. It takes certification. It takes accreditations and uh, we, we're doing all of that. Well when we come back from this break we're going to dive right into finding out what you have going on in terms of um, incentive programs, getting people to come here and how you want to build the, the fire department going forward. We'll be right back. Welcome back Douglas County residents. We are continuing our dialogue with Chief Miles Allen. Well, Dr. Chief Miles Allen, yes, we want to put all the respect on your name, <laughs> um, but we're very thankful to have you here um, in leadership in our fire department. Um, one of the things that we were talking about prior to the break was the growth and vision and direction that the fire department is going into. And I'm sure part of that for you includes having the best and the brightest coming to serve in Douglas yes, County. So what um, incentives are you looking at? So right now, currently as we speak, we have a leadership program going on for our our veterans that are here right now, our current people that are working. So we're sending them through leadership school. However, one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to bring in some of the best of the best. And part of that is making sure that we have the capabilities of attracting the right people. So incentive programs that we're looking at is education incentive programs. If you come in with a uh, degree of some type that's related to the field, we want to reward you for that and have you come and work with us for that. Um, if you come in with a, a language, whether speaking Spanish, uh, French, German, whatever the case may be, if you have some type of secondary language, we want to also incentivize that. We want to incentivize our AEMTs, which is our advanced uh, emergency medical technicians. We want to incentivize our paramedics. And so we do have programs for those individuals who only want to ride on uh, the ambulances. And so that is one of the newer things that just came back. That, that has just been 
um, introduced. And so it is, it looked like it's starting to flourish because not everybody wants to ride on the bright red fire trucks. We do have individuals that want to get hands on with emergency medical uh, services. And so one of the things we, we focused on was to incentivize those individuals who go to school. Uh, a paramedic goes through a lot of school and a lot of training. So to get the best of the best to come in, we wanted to make sure that we reached out and had a mechanism to incentivize these individuals for their, for their certifications and talent. And so that was actually a point of education for myself, and I'm sure a lot of residents would want to know more about it, but I was unaware that there was a difference between an EMT, a paramedic, um, the different levels. So could you kind of describe what those are and how that's being used to service our residents? Yes, ma'am. So currently we have, uh, it's three levels. You have a basic EMT, you have an advanced EMT, which is a EMT, and then you have the paramedics. And each one of those, uh, one of those certifications have a specific role when responding to emergency medical uh, medical uh, incidents. Your basic EMTs will will more than likely be your transport. They can be there to mitigate an incident. Uh, your advanced EMTs will be the next level. They can do a little bit more than what the basic can. And so behind that, you have your paramedics. Your paramedics are your your top of the top. Basically, they can push medication. They can do different things. They can uh, they can order certain things within protocols, which puts them above those advanced levels. So we have all three at the at the present. Um, right now, our paramedics can either be on a quick response vehicle, or they can actually lead a fire truck. Because nine, nine times out of ten, when you call nine one one, a fire truck is the first thing that's out of a station, followed behind by a uh, an ambulance. And that ambulance may have a AMT on it, or on any given day, a, uh, a paramedic. So we try to stay as well-rounded and prepared as we can, uh, but due to manning and staffing, that's why we're trying to do these incentive programs, uh, we want to make sure that we cover the county and the community as well as we can. And with that, you know, I, I hear you at all the meetings that you come to say, no matter what, fire is going to respond and so it sounds to me like you're doing an amazing job of really making sure that we have um, not just a fleet of vehicles that is sufficient to meet the needs of the county but really a fleet of people right. um, who are prepared um, and ready to serve so I think that's that's wonderful yeah you know, you know people tend to take us for granted mm -hmm. you know uh, something happens we call 911 somebody is going to come there yeah and that is going to be my mantra every we, we are going to respond Regardless of rain, sleet, snow, gloom of night, we will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to make the county and the community aware that you are going to have a professional that's going to be there. And there's times where, um, we, where we, we ask for things. We, we need personnel. We need mm -hmm. the best of the best. We need the right equipment. We, we need the right um, vehicles because, once again, we are a metro. Mm -hmm. And we need to be as good, if not better, than our metro people on the outside, our Cobbs, our Atlantis, mm -hmm. our Paulings. And so, because I-20 is in the middle of us, we have a, uh, we have a rail line, mm -hmm. we have your section, which has all the bad stuff in it. So- We got all the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dirty too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so making sure that we have the, 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 proper, the proper resources and assets is, is paramount. And it sounds like you also are, um, in, in terms of training, y'all are also enhancing your training facility. Is that correct? Our training facility is we're, it's starting to grow to be one of the uh, state-of-the-art training facilities. We just have a brand new, just got a brand new uh, burn building. And this burn building, we can make it into any configuration that we want to. So Because when we do training, mm -hmm. if we have the same old building with the same old configuration, You'll our, memorize it. our firefighters will, will grow a, a muscle memory. And so they will not learn anything. We can move walls. We can move floors. We can move ceilings, things of that nature. And so it gives them the opportunity to go into something new every single time. Oh, that's beautiful and definitely helpful for residents to have confidence that they don't have to know your house. They'll be able to find you in an emergency. So that's wonderful. 
Um, speaking of them going into your house, I know um, that the fire department has been very open about welcoming residents into their house. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. So one thing that I have stressed amongst uh, my command staff and all of my uh, firefighters is the fire stations are the community's building. So at any given time, anybody can walk into the station, you know, with, within reason. Um, ask questions, see what we have going on. Uh, and that's part of our, our new movement forward is to educate the public. So we try to get out into the community to talk about things that we do to let people know who we are. Mm -hmm. But there are times that we know that we can't always make it out. So I said, come, come to my house. Mm -hmm. Come and see what we got going on. Come and talk to the individuals. Find out what they have going on. Because what we tend to forget is the number of people that we have in our fire department live here in the county. So they're citizens also. Yeah. And so they don't get the opportunity to go out and tell other citizens. So come into our house, see what we got going on. I definitely want to take this as a, a point of privilege and, and shout out the fire department and the station on Riverside. They have taken that to heart. They are so welcoming um, to the community. And I know knowing that the first responders that serve me know me, know my family, know my friends, know my children, also lends itself to enhance public safety. Yes, and so I appreciate them always being willing to come to our, um, you know, coffee with the first responders. It's clear to me, they know the names of the kids in the neighborhoods. Um, we have the bike to school that's coming up in October and they've been so gracious to participate in that every year. Um, and so I just applaud them well. Um, is there anything else that you would like to close with? Um, once again, um, you dial 911, you have an issue. And like I said earlier today, I was speaking, um, anything from a leaky faucet to a smoke detector ringing off to a cat in a tree, we get those calls. Now, we ask, we ask people, you know, an emergency is an emergency, but how do I gauge what you feel an emergency is? Mm -hmm. So people will call 911. Nine times out of 10, we are the ones that's going out there. And that's why we have to partner with a lot of different other agencies because that issue may not involve us, but we need to know who to call to get involved in that. Well, I don't know about the rest of the residents of Douglas County, but I certainly feel safer uh, knowing that you are leading the charge for us and that our fire department is going to respond. I do appreciate you all for taking the time to watch this district dialogue and spend about 30 minutes or so finding out about all of the great things that uh, Chief Allen has going on. And thank you for kicking off this public safety series and we look forward to future programs. Thank you.